everyone. I'm here to introduce Executive Director Riggs, Public Safety. He's going to talk to you about the transition plan for the Denver Sheriff's Department. Thank you, Kelly. <clears throat> First, let me recognize our Chief Operating Officer of the City, Murphy Robinson, is here. Thank you, sir, for being with us today. Also, thank you for being here. Before I begin, on behalf of Mayor Hancock and the family that is the Department of Public Safety, I want to thank Sheriff Furman for his four years of service to this great city. I also want to thank him for his 30 years and congratulate him on 30 years of service in public safety. That is commendable and certainly quite an accomplishment. But with the Sheriff's resignation, there's going to be plenty of questions and we want to make sure we're being as transparent as possible and to answer those questions that the public may have. Today we will in fact announce an interim sheriff. I will do that in a moment. The person that is being appointed will work alongside Sheriff Furman in the coming weeks to make sure that there is a smooth transition. Uh, that was going to take place sometime around October the 14th when the new sheriff, interim sheriff, will be sworn in. Sheriff Furman, and I want to make this very clear, Sheriff Furman will retain his responsibilities as sheriff until October the 14th or a day close to that date. And the new interim sheriff will assume full responsibilities as the sheriff here in Denver. This will be going ongoing uh, for the next few months in this interim position. Let me just say as far as the interim position, we expect that the new interim sheriff will begin meeting with rank and file tomorrow and throughout the weekend. This is going to continue throughout the year uh, because the mayor has asked the new interim sheriff and I to gather information from the workforce on future endeavors and where they would like to see the department go in 2020 and beyond. It's important we hear from our valuable employees. They do a difficult job each and every day. Additionally, Michael Sapp from my office, you may remember Michael, not only from the Denver Opportunity Index, but from the help that he did in putting community panels together for the police chief search. He did such a good job. We're going to ask him to do the same thing on the sheriff's side and we're going to be asking the community for their input. What would they like to see in the next sheriff? What type of issues do they think we need to address? So you will hear more about that. We believe these community meetings, we're going to schedule at least two uh, that will begin sometime at the end of October uh, towards the end of the year. Our goal is to get information because we think it's vital from not only the workforce, but the public and to put that together for a presentation to the mayor in the first or second week of January so he can decide on how he would like to move forward at that time. Uh, the mayor is traveling today and sends his regrets. However, with Sheriff Furman's resignation and him wanting to make that public uh, sooner rather than later, we didn't want to be a delay. So that's why I'm announcing our new interim sheriff on behalf of Mayor Hancock today. So at this time, I'm going to ask our interim Denver Sheriff Fran Gomez to come forward with me and to say a few things about Fran. As I said before, she will be sworn as, as the interim sheriff of Denver in mid-October. Once again, I want to stress this. She will be given the full authority of the sheriff of this city. Fran is a veteran law enforcement professional. She has 30 years of experience. She served at all different levels of policing from beginning as a recruit all the way to an assistant chief. In the last year, she has been a proud member of the Denver Sheriff's Department. So at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you formally the interim sheriff that will take over in mid-October, Fran Gomez. Fran, thank you. Thank you. There's so many of you. So, <laughs> um, do you have any questions? I could tell you a little about myself or if there's any questions you'd like to ask. No? Oh. Right now I'm the Director of Professional Standards. I work for Division Chief Connie Coyle uh, in administration. How long have you been with the department? One year this time. And where'd you come from? I actually was retired for two years, but I really miss law enforcement. But I started my career at the Denver Sheriff's Department many years ago. Um, I transitioned to the Aurora Police Department. I was there over 23 years. And then I was Deputy Chief at Commerce City for two and a half years. Retired, but really missed it. So I saw this job uh, opening and I was very excited to take it. And I've had a wonderful year, honestly, and was very excited for this opportunity. What is your number one goal as, as the interim sheriff coming in here? Well, um, I will find that out. Unfortunately, I don't know everything just yet. So I plan, uh, like uh, Director Riggs said, meeting with everybody, finding out what everybody else's main concerns are. I have 
um, some exposure over this year, but I don't know everything. So I'd like to find out what all is going on, what, what's on everybody's mind, what the department needs, and work from there. We know you're in an interim position, but would you, would you consider taking this job or, or, or being a candidate for this job? Um, that's a good question. I don't know, but I'll tell you in three months. <laughs> I was just a deputy sheriff, so I worked inside the jail, in, in the county jail, actually. For how long? Three years. Is this the first time a female's led the department? It is, I believe. Uh, we believe it is. We, we were told that, and I'll step up here, just, that was shared with us this morning. Uh, we did not realize that until after the decision had been made, but we believe it is now after talking to a few individuals. But she's also a trend breaker. She was the first commander in Aurora. There was a lady in that position, and she also commanded the SWAT team, which is quite frankly unheard of across this nation. So she has a lot of experience and a lot of expertise as being a commander. And quite frankly, one of the reasons the mayor and I feel strong, so strongly about her is she'll make the tough decisions. She's tenacious. She's friendly. She's got a nice smile. But believe me, she's tough as nails as well. Where was the sheriff asked to step down? No, the sheriff resigned on his own. The sheriff had, quite frankly, and it's his story to tell, so I don't want to say too much, but he, uh, he is not here, and that's why I'm going to kind of answer your question. He, uh, he had been mentioning potentially stepping down for a couple months now, and just thought this was the time to do it, and had a conversation, I believe, with the mayor last week. The sheriff was hired as a change agent. Do you believe he brought that change the city hired him to fix, and how much did the recent scandals play a role in this? Right. You'd have to ask him regarding why he decided to leave at this time. But I will tell you that there has been progress made in the Sheriff's Department. I've been here for a year and a half. I've seen great progress. But I also have to be very honest and say there's a lot more work that needs to be done. I'm confident that Fran's going to get us moving in that direction. But let's be clear, working in a jail, our deputies are dealing with tremendous stress. 50% of the inmates have a mental health issue. It is troublesome at times in the jail. We need to do everything we can to support those deputies. We believe Fran is going to help get us there long term. You described some of the difficulties of the job. How hard is it going to be to find someone to fill that position? It sounds like a relatively undesirable job. Right. I, I have searched for everything from police chiefs to fire chiefs and been in those processes myself. If that's something that the mayor decides to move forward with, that's going to be difficult. These are difficult jobs. There's very few people in the world that have the talent to run a very complicated jail with all the medical needs and all the behavioral health needs are within a jail system. So it is challenging, but we are the city of Denver. We attract the best and brightest, and I believe it's going to be easy for us to find someone if we take our time. But first, before we even have that conversation, we have to understand what our workforce believes they need in a leader moving forward. That's important for sustainability, and certainly we're all accountable to the public. We need to hear from the public as well. That's what we're going to do over the next few months. Also, I've made a decision since the mayor has asked me to lead this. I do not want to give the mayor any formal recommendation until we've heard from everyone. He's certainly in agreement with that. He's my boss. But also, it's difficult to do a search during the holidays. So we will have that conversation between now and January. Troy, you said that you all need to be accountable to the public. Do you believe that the Denver sheriff should be in elected position? That's up to the, um, the mayor to decide how he would like to handle that if that, in fact, becomes... Uh, something that's on the ballot. Personally, I will share with you that I think that, that there's a lot of uh, potential issues with that if that is an elected position. And we can talk further about that at some later date. Troy, you're a reformer. You came in and, and you tried to reform the system, use more data, focus on mental mm -hmm. health. Um, are you going to be looking for someone who's a reformer um, to, to lead the department? Right. I think as we look at the Sheriff's Department with the challenges, there's still some reform that needs to be done. And don't get me wrong, there's been great strides. And I want to thank the men and women of the Sheriff's Department that work each and every day, those that are here today that have made a big difference in this community. But there's still work that needs to be done. So I'm going to look for someone that may not be characterized as a reformer, but someone's not afraid to uh, deal with the tough changes and address the issues that need to be addressed. Is that nationwide? That's something that's going to have to be determined when I meet with the mayor in January with the results of what we've determined from our workforce and also uh, the public. I understand the mayor's not here. In his statement last night, though, he said that some of the, the criticism of Sheriff Furman was fair. What is that criticism that was fair? I, I am not going to get into that. I have not had a conversation with the mayor about that statement. Uh, but certainly will when he returns. In your mind, is any criticism of Sheriff Furman fair? I think you could say that there's fair criticism to any of us in leadership. 
Uh, I can say that about myself. I've made mistakes in my tenure here. I'm not going to share those today, but I have, I have made those mistakes. And I think that's what the mayor was referring to, but I won't know for sure until I talk to him. Obviously, uh, the sheriff has stepped down. It's time now to thank him for his service, but it's also time to look to the future. What do you view as the biggest challenges for the sheriff's department moving forward that this new person is going to have to address? Well, I think the first thing we have to address is morale. It's a very difficult place to work. Uh, we have, as a society, have asked the sheriff deputies to do some impossible work. When you work with a, a group of individuals that at least 50% have some type of mental health issue, that's a challenge. We have to do better in providing services for our deputies, and we have to value them, not only within public safety, but as citizens as well. We have to greatly understand the challenges they face. That's going to be job number one, is how do we build morale over time and also demonstrate to the public how valuable their service is. Why did you think you still this? Pardon me? Why did you think you still yeah, I got to know um, Fran over the last year and her workings, and we actually had coffee and conversation. And one of the things that really struck me about her was her background, her 30 years of experience. You cannot, you cannot teach command experience. She has a command presence, she does well in front of individuals, and she's truthful and honest and transparent. And we need that in all forms of government, and not just here, but in all parts of public safety and government throughout the city. Why pick somebody who has spent relatively few number of years in the Yeah, and, and you know, that was uh, something that I thought about as well. There's a couple of reasons. One is that I think with her past experience and command experience, she'll ask the tough questions. It's new eyes. Uh, on the situation also, she's been very active and involved with policies and procedures, and that's going to be important for us moving forward. Additionally, I thought it was important to bring someone in that if we get to January and we were going to move forward with the search, that I didn't want someone already wearing the uniform in that process. Uh, I thought that was important as well. So having, but at the end of the day, the most important part, new set of eyes, someone with command experience that dealt with tough issues before, I think that's important for the sheriff's department now. Do you believe the sheriff have the confidence of his employees? I think that's always a challenge within the sheriff's department. I will tell you this about Sheriff Furman. You will not meet a more caring and dedicated individual that cared about his workforce. He is a good man, and as I said before, I certainly uh, wish him well in future endeavors. But do you think he had the confidence in the workforce? I think that's one of those questions, almost like you said, is it fair criticism? Um, I think with some you do, some you don't, and that's always in leadership. Do I think he came to work every day to give it all he had? Absolutely. Is he working today giving all he had? Absolutely, and he'll do that for the citizens of this community. And let me just say this, after 30 years, you get a little tired. Tough job, tough job. But once again, I want to focus on where we need to go in the future. What comes with the sheriff's resignation? Is there any sort of like incentives package that he gets from resigning? I mean, is there a... No. no. It's just his on. He'll be handled like any other employee that would exit services. Is okay. There, is there yes. a reason why he's not here today? Uh, no. He, he has taken a day off. He does know that he'll probably get some uh, individuals that would like to sit down and talk to him in the future. But I think he's going to take a few days, spend some time with the family, and then he'll be back at work most likely tomorrow morning or Monday morning ready to go. A question for Sheriff Gomez. Uh, we've seen uh, the city just settle the lawsuit with some female deputies. In your mind, from your perspective, uh, what is the atmosphere in the Denver jail for female deputies? Honestly, I haven't been in the jail very much, but I can tell you that I expect um, all employees, male and females, to be treated with respect and dignity. So I will definitely be looking into that, but I just don't have enough details at this point. And in your time on the job, you mentioned a year. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed that needs fixing in the department? Well, I've been working in administration, so I would say one of the things we've really been working hard on is uh, making policy more consistent, easier to read, um, putting like policies with like policies so there's not so many in our book. Um, so definitely I think when we get our policies nailed down a bit more, it's going to be very good for all the deputies. I think it's a great challenge. I'm looking very much forward to it. And were all of your other years with Aurora? In Commerce City. In Commerce City. What did you do in Aurora? Um, well, I started as a police officer and I ended up as a commander. All right, thank you all.